Minister of India for flagging off the inaugural run of this prestigious Vande Bharat Express. आत्मनिर्भर भारत के संकल्प के साथ हम नेक्स्ट जनरेशन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर और मल्टी मॉडल कनेक्टिविटी अगले 25 वर्षों के भारत की बुनियाद रच रहे हैं The strategically important Zojila tunnel that connects the Kashmir Valley with the Union Territory of Ladakh. The work on the tunnel has continued even during harsh winters in Kashmir's Sonma. It is one of the several such large-scale infrastructure projects that are central to Prime Minister Narendra Modi's mission of building New India. We have set aside a record amount of rupees 10 lakh crore for investment in infrastructure. This is five times more than that of 2014. India is adding 10,000 kilometers of highways a year. A hundred Vande Bharat trains will bring cities closer. The world's second largest metro system will be ready in the next 24 months. Six freight corridors will change how Indians trade. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India's infrastructure story is being built at a pace never seen before. Zojila Tunnel is Asia's longest and being built at the cost of Rs. 7,000 crores. The 13.14 km long tunnel passes under the mighty Zojila Pass in the Himalayas, connecting Kashmir to the Dras town in the Kargil district of Ladakh and comprises four culverts and four tunnels. At present, 28% work of the Zujila Tunnel has been completed. The travel time will come down to 20 minutes from over one hour and more importantly will provide logistics flexibility and operational mobility to the Indian Army. New roads, highways, airports and railways are critical for India to fulfill its ambition to become a $5 trillion economy by 2025-26 and a $7 trillion economy by 2030. It is this transformative power of new transport infrastructure that is perhaps the most important factor that appeals to the emerging middle class. And Prime Minister Modi has made it a hallmark of his administration. If you look at the infrastructure story, it has provided 30 million houses. That's like providing a house to every single citizen of Australia. That was the size and scale. If you look at 110 million people have been provided toilets. That's like providing a toilet to every single citizen of Germany. And if you look at what piped water connection, 243 million water connections. That's like providing a water connection to every single citizen of Brazil. That's the size and scale and 55,000 kilometers of roads. 55,000 kilometers of road means one and a half times the diameter of the earth. That is the size and scale. So the size and scale, technology, rooting out corruption and the Prime Minister personally monitoring and his big vision were the reasons behind the success. India is adding 10,000 kilometers of highways every year. The length of the rural road network has reached 7,29,000 kilometers this year. The 50,000 kilometers of national highway India has added in the past eight years is twice as much as it managed in the previous eight. Our Delhi decongestion ka ek plan, hamare vibhag ke aur se humne tayar kiya tha, aur usme humne kuch kam jo kiye the total, ham usme 65,000 crores. के काम कर रहे हैं और उसमें करीब 25,000 करोड़ के काम हमने पूरे किए हैं 33,000 करोड़ रुपए के काम प्रोग्रेस में हैं 
from roadways to railways. In this year's budget, road and rail will account for nearly 11% of central government capital spending, up from 2.75% in 2014-15. Prior to 2014, around 600 route railway kilometers per year were electrified. And now, it's 4,000 route kilometers per annum. Sometimes people from Delhi or other parts of India do not appreciate the psychological impact something like having a railway station for the first time in my state after independence or having an airport for the first time in my state how psychologically important it has important it has been in terms of mainstreaming the northeast the perception wise and as everyone is aware the pm has had a focus on connectivity in the northeast mm. so far as the connectivity is concerned the most visible one is roads and highways and uh, you can see the multiplier effects of it they have been studied also wherever the road development or the highway development has happened you can see the hinterland growing a hundred Vande Bharat trains connecting every corner of India, all before 2024. These are made in India, semi-high speed and self-propelled trains. These are, as of now, the fastest trains in India with a speed of 180 kilometers per hour. This revitalization of Indian railways to search for a better, faster, cleaner, uh, set of trains and the Vande Bharat program of having 400 more Vande Bharats of which I hope about 100 of them come in pretty soon make an impact across the countryside. People see them and you know anecdotal evidence is that a lot of intercity movement has shifted away from air to people opting for uh, Vande Bharat trains. So it's something people can touch and feel. Also the massive station upgradation program you see Many of the stations today are so much cleaner, their, their architecture is so much different, uh, is so outstanding and the ease with which passengers are moving in and out and the facilities they are getting is many leagues higher than what happened earlier. Essentially what needs to be done for the railways is a much more complicated exercise because you need to rationalize tariffs, yep. you need to complete the freight corridors you need to speed up the speed of goods trains. You need to end the cross subsidization of um, low passenger fares um, and high freight. You need to have a regulator. So the railway part is a more complicated exercise. The greater multiplier effect will come from freight, not from the passenger part. Of the six freight corridors that are expected to change the way India travels, Two, one between Mumbai and Delhi and the other between Punjab and West Bengal are partly operational and fast-tracked. Freight corridors will not only decongest existing lines but would also allow the trains to move faster. The government hopes its new corridors will boost railway freight from 27% to 45% by 2030. Also joining the dots in air travel the number of Indian airports has doubled in the last nine years. If you're talking about the middle class, well, it is the, it is the push towards smaller airports, regional routes, the push for civil aviation where middle class families are traveling by air. Uh, I think are signs of visible progress where the infrastructure elements of uh, the Prime Minister's program has touched people's lives. A unique platform for all this planning is Pragati, an ambitious multi-purpose and multi-modal platform headed by the Prime Minister himself. He conducts progress reviews with rail, roads and other relevant departments every month. There's a structure to these projects and every mile is mapped. Monitoring today is at four levels. There is the uh, PM's own, the Prime Minister's own review uh, from the PMO, uh, I think it's called the Pragati platform, where he directly speaks to the district magistrates of a district to review why something has stalled, why isn't it moving. 
Then there is the, uh, there is a specialized group in the Ministry of Commerce and Industry that is looking at this area and, and suggesting stuff to get things moving quicker. Niti has been also tasked with taking a broad overview of projects and what help they require and most specifically where projects that do not have great hope of survival are actually decisions are taken to abandon them. It did not happen in the past. Uh, and finally, we have the Ministry of Program Implementation and Statistics who are, I think, far more on the ball than they were earlier. The PM started monitoring personally through the Pragati, that is all the secretaries, all the chief secretaries, wherever there were bottlenecks, he was monitoring personally. Secondly, there's been a huge use of technology, massive use of technology to monitor every construction through the GPS system. Gati Shakti is the nerve center where plans are put to work. A multi-ministerial platform now coordinates between different sectors, checking inefficiencies and wastage, and for better planning, including expeditious resolution of land acquisition and timely completion of projects. The platform has 1,600 layers of data to ensure better decision making. At the core of this infra story is the emphasis on people, those lives that may get disrupted. Much importance is paid on rehabilitation. So far as RNR is concerned, there is an established policy in the government. There are specific norms by which a project developer, public or private, has to take care of displaced people. If you are, for example, submerging a village by building a large dam, then you have to create alternative accommodation, means of livelihood, etc. These are all well laid out in terms of, shall we say, uh, procedures. So RNR has become far less of an issue than it used to be earlier when activists were all on the streets protesting against any major project. So far as, I mean, the jobs and livelihood at one level is protected by the RNR. On the other positive side is around a large project, actually jobs and livelihoods are created. So that's a positive. One of the challenges that the government faced was pushing development in fragile ecology. How does one build safe roads in treacherous terrain? An important project the government took up was the 889 kilometer long Char Dham Pariyojana, making it easy for pilgrims to trek the religious sites of Gangotri, Yamunotri, Kedarnath and Badrinath that are some of India's highest altitude temples in India's remotest areas. The project is expected to slash travel time by 40%. The country already has the fifth largest metro network in the world. And with each passing day, we are forging new routes. Prime Minister Modi recently launched the Water Metro a unique urban mass transit system with the same experience and ease of travel as that of conventional metro systems in Kochi. Kochi Water Metro ka jo projects hai, wo bhi made in India hai, unique hai. Many factors have helped the infrastructure story. India's electricity generation capacity has grown by 22% and renewable energy capacity has nearly doubled in five years to 2022. Internet connectivity and digital payments have increased manifold in the last five years. A lot more needs to be done. A new World Bank report estimates that India will need to invest $840 billion over the next 15 years into urban infrastructure mainly to meet the needs of its fast-growing urban population. By 2036, 600 million people will be living in urban cities in India, representing 40% of the population, which is likely to put additional pressure on the already stretched urban infrastructure. India's standing in geopolitics has gone up by many notches. Uh, the, the cleanup of the banking system, uh, ease of doing business. But I think in as we gear up to uh, the national elections, 
the lens that I would like to look at is what are those impactful projects that the common people of India can see, touch, feel and benefit from. India's infra story is one of its biggest success stories of the last nine years. It has scale, speed and it is setting standards for others. And while the country builds more and more, the government needs to keep up the pace and continue pushing action to fuel not just growth but also investment, keeping its own people at the centre of it.